the FlashForge Adventurer 5M Pro. A new printer from FlashForge designed to make 3D printing fast and easy for anyone looking for an out-of-the-box printing solution. It simplifies all of the small nuances that you need to get started and it even comes pre-assembled to make that process even easier. Now, it's not perfect, but for the price point and the quality, it's a hard option to ignore. To start things off, Flashforge did send this over for a review. However, all opinions in this video are my own. With that said, let's go ahead and start off with the setup of this 3D printer. The Adventure 5M Pro is shipped out almost completely assembled. However, what it lacks in assembly, it understandably makes up for in packaging. Now it comes preloaded with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So when you first get this, most of your setup includes removing the padding, a few screws that they have to hold things together, and then attaching the spool holder on the back. Once you're done with all that and you power it up, it will automatically throw you into the auto leveling program. Now this automated leveling setup process is what really makes the 5M Pro easy to use. It simplifies and takes a lot of the guesswork out of bed leveling, which is kind of a critical step for successful prints. And being somebody who has spent countless hours doing this the hard way, I can definitely appreciate the automation. Now included with the printer are the basic tools that you will need to make repairs or adjustments along with some grease, some glue, micro cutters, and another nozzle that is a 0.6 millimeter. You also get a sample of some titanium sparkle blue plastic to print with that is actually kind of good looking. Unfortunately, I personally didn't get to enjoy too many finished products from this because there's a little small box I didn't realize was so vital to a successful print that it took me a little bit to realize I had to click. So I kind of dealt with some loss of plastic and failed prints just because I didn't know to click this button, but that's more of a me problem and not understanding the printer, so I'm really resisting the urge to rant. I'm just going to say that this little button, you want to click it every single time you print. It does not matter if you've already leveled your bed or you've successfully printed something. Every print, click this for the best results. So the 5M Pro features a fully enclosed 220 millimeter cubed building area with built-in cooling and air filtration. You have the option to circulate the air internally, allowing you to manage your temperatures way more accurately, or to circulate the air externally through a HIPAA-grade air filter, greatly reducing the smell and toxins from the materials you're using. It has a flexible, textured, double-sided, and magnetic build plate that can be heated up to 110 degrees Celsius. This plate makes retrieving your prints and resetting everything for the next print extremely easy to do. However, in my experience, especially during the first few prints, it can sometimes offer a challenge to get prints to stick. Even though my initial negative experience was from me not pressing the auto level button for every print, I was able to sort of relive the experience after I accidentally scraped the build plate just a little too hard and I ended up flipping it over to get a cleaner first layer print. I'd kind of compare this to like a cast iron skillet. This build plate works best after it's been seasoned a little. And by that, I mean that after about two or three prints or print trials using the same amount of glue and printing instructions, the plastic started to stick a lot better. After a while, I really didn't even need glue every single print. It just took me a little bit to get that bed seasoned just right. And Flashforge does include some glue to kind of help you get started, but I found that the good old purple glue sticks work perfectly well. As for the nozzles, Flashforge uses a proprietary quick-release hardened steel nozzle system that offers sizes of 0 0.25, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0.8 millimeter. Getting up to temperatures of 280 degrees Celsius, the 5M Pro can handle a wide variety of different plastics, such as PLA, PETG, TPU, ABS, and ASA. Now, the quick release system does make swapping out nozzles a breeze. However, since replacements cost about $40, I can't help but to wonder how difficult it would be to disassemble these and replace just the tip with a cheaper alternative. While I completely understand the whole path of simplicity that FlashForge has taken with this printer, I can't ignore the resulting of overpriced replacement parts. I mean, $40 to replace your nozzle is kind of a steep price, especially if you know how to replace a nozzle. If you don't, and you like the simplicity of a simple squeeze and release system like this, then it kind of makes sense. When it comes to speed, the Adventure 5M Pro really starts to show off by moving as fast as 600 millimeters per second with an acceleration of 20,000 millimeters per second squared. Because of this potential speed and the way it prints, I highly recommend to place the printer on a very stable surface, like a solid table, to help resist the movements and the vibrations of the printer. Now, a lot of factors are going to come into play when you're trying to print at high speeds. Yes, the dual drive belt setup of the 5M Pro is the backbone to fast printing. 
However, it's the control over the printing environment's temperatures and the availability of high-speed plastics that will ultimately allow you to achieve higher speeds. During my testing, I didn't really push the speeds much faster than maybe 250 millimeters per second, but this is mostly because I burned through all of my sample high-speed PLA and I kind of started printing from my stockpile collection of plastics. But that's okay because when I print something, I'm looking for more of a finished product and less of a prototype speed build. As an example, part of my testing was printing out those print in one place expandable swords thing that totally worked out in every single way. I had to wait 18 hours, 18 hours for this thing to print. So Big Big Spoon was telling me about a lightsaber that you can print and then it like comes out and it extends, right? But I decided to print off a katana sword because I thought it was cool looking. And this is the uh, moment where I got to see if it worked, which it, it's, it's stuck. All right, I just wanted to make sure I didn't break it. So this prints all off in one piece. Um, I didn't use anything but except for a rim or a brim, whatever. And it's supposed to just come apart. So I guess you're supposed to just... Mother... Fuck. Okay, so... I immediately broke that. Don't worry, I did go back and print it again, but the temperatures weren't exactly right, so the smaller piece still came out just a little weird. But other than that, I did print off a few sample things just to kind of show off the print quality and also kind of to prove that I got it to stick. But at the end of the day, so many factors of quality prints resides in the options you select to print with. Things like heat and speed are the most obvious variables here, but other things like better slicing software, layer thickness, or even layer ironing are the key to fine tuning your prints. In fact, in kind of an embarrassing way, that actually delayed the production of this video. You see, as I gained more experience with this printer and I tried out even more materials like a carbon fiber PLA that I just seemed to love, my prints kept getting better and better. This primarily came down to fine-tuning the temperatures, but I found myself constantly deleting pre-planned rants about things that just ended up being my fault. But trust me, this does not mean that the Adventure 5M Pro isn't without its flaws, most of which I consider huge swing and miss features. For example, you can connect the printer with USB, Ethernet, or Wi-Fi. The problem with that though, at least for me, was that when I used the FlashForge software to connect and send prints, I didn't have the option to click that magic little auto level box that the printer seems to need so desperately for successful prints. That means that no matter what, I was still getting up, going into another room, just to physically load a USB drive and starting a print. Adding salt to injury, the 5M Pro comes with a built-in camera that you can monitor via the FlashForge software, usually. However, using it has caused more issues for me than what it's worth. And I can put aside the fact that only the FlashForge software can connect to this camera. I mean, I dream of an RTSP port or a phone app so I can monitor the printer, but I've kind of accepted the fact that it will probably never come in a firmware update. What gets me though is how the printer responds to me using the FlashForge software to constantly monitor a print. Now, I can't really narrow this next part down very well, so I'm gonna do my best to kind of share my gut feelings based off of my observations. What it feels like to me is that if I keep the software running and connected to the printer, it creates sort of a lag or a reduction in performance on the printer itself. Now, this could be from the overhead of the camera feed or the added network traffic in general, but the active connection has seemed to cause the most fatal errors during a print. I've had weird things like the LCD screen on the printer popping up a print error and freezing, layer shifts, layer skips, uh, the print bed not being aligned and making noise, even after I aligned it, forcing me to actually have to reboot the printer just to solve the problem. And what really frustrates me with all those problems is that when I try to recreate them so I could record them and send them to FlashForge, I can't seem to nail down what exactly causes them, or for that matter, get them to consistently come up. The best I've been able to do is narrow it down to three or five hour plus long prints and having the webcam connected for extended amounts of time. As long as I don't use the software, connect to it all the time and monitor that camera, I've never actually had a major layer shift or a critical hardware issue that really bombed a print. This makes using the built-in touchscreen and loading it from a USB drive pretty much your go-to option, especially since you have to use that screen to click the auto level button before each print. And in terms of avoiding the FlashForge software gremlins while also giving me better adherence to the build plate, as far as I'm concerned, the touchscreen and USB combo is the only way to go. But the Adventure 5M Pro is $599. 
Part of that cost, albeit still competitive, includes the hardware for the camera and the network connectivity. But if those add-ons don't function well enough to be used, especially by someone like me who actually wants to use them, but figured out I can't without causing any problems, this makes the additional hardware nothing more than an increased cost to the product with no value added. Thankfully though, these problems are all firmware or software related and can potentially be resolved with a simple update. Even if they're not though, the touchscreen menu and loading with USB is more than enough to get me through the prints, as it is. Overall, I haven't ran into any physical issues yet. Loading filament is easy and reliable. The drive system has been spot on, requiring no physical adjustments. The air circulation works great. It gives me precise control over the internal temperature and the filter on this printer is ideal to work with a variety of different materials. And through a combination of it being a contained unit and the choice of hardware used to make it, the whole thing is actually pretty quiet while it's printing. So from a pure hardware perspective, the 5M Pro is pretty good, but I do think it needs a firmware update or three to really make it shine. Now, as I mentioned before, I don't have a ton of experience with speed printing, so I don't really know how fast you can really get this thing to print. I just know it has the hardware to go fast. But what I do know is that the hardware here provides a lot of control over those speeds and especially the temperatures. The exceptional control of the internal temperature makes this one of those printers that you can use to really fine tune your settings for all kinds of different materials to get some great quality prints. But ultimately, if you're really in a hurry and you wanna bust out one of those super fast prototype prints that you absolutely need in an hour, the Adventure 5M Pro is more than capable of handling the job. So I will throw a link to this 3D printer in the description down below. But if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, make sure to leave those in the comments section down below. So as always, thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a great day.